Hello, welcome back to Charting Analysis. It's already been two months, huh? So, um, I wanted to talk today about probably, like, one of my favorite charts in this entire game, if not my favorite S16. And this is Super Fantasy S16 Prime. And, yeah, let's just go into it. I don't want to waste too much time. And there's a lot to unpack here. I really want to talk about the breakdown of this chart. Okay, this chart already starts off with a bang. You start off with like just it opening up and it just boom, just it just throws out a bunch of streams at you. So what makes Super Fantasy, I feel like a little different comparing to a lot of like other songs in the game is that the chorus just immediately comes. You don't even have like an intro or like generally song progression. It's just like slight intro and boom, you're into it. And if you know the original piano piece, uh, it actually starts like that too, so I think that's pretty cool to keep in mind. So it is easy to brush this section off as just runs, but if you look at it more closely, every time there's a run, it's a there's like a there's a measure, right? You have a 16th hold here. One, two. So there are two 16th holds there, and every time there's a hold there, the pattern was mirrored. And then afterwards. For the song variation with the high notes, or the da 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 da, there's the high notes and then the bottom notes. Now, I think this is a really strong, like, what makes Super Fantasy not just like a run chart, but like a really well crafted one. Mainly because um, the person, like EXE, the person who charted this, could have brushed off the high notes, but instead, what he did, he decided to do was ha have these high and these bottom notes, which pretty much uh, forced the player to a weight shift. Now, if you don't know what weight shifting is, it's basically the idea of how on the pad, um, where more like pressure and like weight you put on the pad. So by having four notes in a row, 16th like this, where you're just like kind of using your toes more, or well, in this case, if you're just breaking into like 16s, you might not have like heel and toe foundation, but generally um, this pattern is a lot more um, like stamina inducing because you have to like you can't it's harder to conserve form on these because they're red notes so I just really like this choice mainly because it's variation and the subtle contrast and dr dr dramatic here you see this top left note and you just have to immediately shift down to a bottom right and you don't realize it at the time but when you do play it and go back to this back and forth you realize how it's such a subtle change and then you just like immediately press down with more runs. The same concept goes with more runs in the 16th hold, but Super Fantasy then gives the player a little bit of a break by having the shutter uh, gimmick. The shutter gimmick is really smart and it's pretty much like part of Super Fantasy's like branding at this point, where the song has the camera shutter sound effect and there's a little slowdown I think it's like an eighth note. It does the same thing repeatedly. With the shutter gimmick, I think the reason why with Phoenix they got rid of so many gimmicks for like the lower levels is basically the uh, unsight readability. So what EXC decided to do, I want you to pay attention to the sequence. So there's a shutter on the yellow note, right? And then after that shutter, it starts with a yellow bottom right blue and then a bottom left blue, right? But look, you see? the same three notes come out. Meaning that a lot of charters, what they do like to do is they would like to mirror or horizontally flip, vertically flip or both to create variation. But due to the fact how, you know, maybe the gimmick might throw some people off, EXE kind of doubles down on the idea of like, you know, trying to, what's called, mirror things for the sake of like, it's, uh, how do I describe it? The more you chart, you kind of know what I mean, where you try to like balance both sides. You wouldn't just have, all the notes on like one side like for example gothic uh, resonance s20 you wouldn't just have the ending just be the entire right side that's why later on in the 
at the second half of the end, it mirrors it on the left side. So it's a pretty much the same concept of this where he just copy and pasted it. He didn't mirror anything and it's the exact same notes. So in that regard, it is a uh, really forgiving and also really well designed. As the song like kind of transitions out of this chorus, like the do 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 do, like out of it, you have red, yellow, red, blue, with the same time. So pretty much, your right foot um, would be anchoring between the yellow and blue note, while the uh, left foot would just hit the reds. Now, I think this is a really cool way to end this part because you could just do more runs, but. I think in a sense this type of pattern is a little bit more straightforward compared to runs reading wise, but it also still contains that tension and how, you know, it's exiting out, but you still gotta move, and how, you know, every snare beat is more emphasized here with the, the, the yellow note. Done, 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 and that's a measure of it. Right here, we have a break. Um, this break is fairly tame, being at uh, eighth notes. However, it is important to keep in mind that there are twists still, meaning that even this part would be so easy for like an S12 or like 14, but the fact that you did all of those runs prior and now you have to like twist your body, um, this is where like the mental and like the fatigue kind of starts to really come in play where it's like, ah oh, crap, I, I, have to, I have to commit to these twists. And exiting out, you have the staircase, and, and here you have the part right before the chorus. I don't know what you would classify it as, like, as like song structure wise. I mean, my brain might not be really functioning right now. I just, I woke up, it's like 11 right now. Check this out. This part, um, Despite it being, um, you know, you can still hear like a lot of like, you know, the melody in the background, but it's not as like, you don't hear all the parts of the song. And I think that's illustrated well with like the BGA, for example, because the clarity of like the dancer is like, it's only 50%. And I guess that's how EXE almost um, interpreted this part of the song with this chart, because he could have opted for maybe more runs, maybe holds, but instead what he decides to do is have the 16 bursts, da 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 And I think that overruns, and also having like a little break too, because like if he just had runs immediately, the player would, it wouldn't be the most balanced. Holds could have worked here. I think holds could work, but maybe it wouldn't be as dramatic, because I think the holds would allow you to gain your composure. But this is super fantasy we're talking about. Super fantasy, is not supposed to be your friend. It's just supposed to be just brutal, just move, move, move. So again, it's just really just wonderful chart design. But he decides to do the burst idea, and I think that's it, it works super well again for the whole tension building idea. As you, again, this is a trend. A lot of times before you're like exiting a section, it gets harder to kind of one, build more tension, but two, also let the player know like it's time to get moving. And as you can see, these bursts are simple here where it's just like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a, almost like a jack. And in here, more weight shift. Much more movement in comparison. Not too much more, but you can tell what I mean, right? There's a mixture between them. Variation, tension building, it's great. Now, into the second course, we have the exact same Screams as last time. This is this is just horizontally flipped. This part is mirrored, meaning it's the exact same thing as you've done before. So you know what you're getting at. Only this time, where are the shutters? There are no shutters. This is where Super Fantasy really begins to show its true colors. So you have that hold, right? Hold. You see? That is just a full-on scream for like a few measures. Unlike the first chorus where it was more focused on almost like a doing like a burst of energy to get that run. Now this is just a full-on run. You just gotta run. But what, that's your last one. 
Again, the same idea of the weight shift applies here, but the only difference is, you know, there's no shutters, and it's a lot more tiring. You, you'd think you would get more of a break here, but no, Super Fantasy does not forgive now. This is the exact same break as before. Um, I'm not sure if it's mirrored. I, I think it is mirrored, but converted from 8 holds to 6 teams. The exact same thing. Now it's like you really gotta commit to these twists. And now you have a. This is a funky twist, and I love it. And. I don't really have too much to say. It's just. It builds off the idea of tension again. I think that's the main theme. I'm being a little repetitive, I know, but again, I just. Super Fantasy builds off that theme so well. It's familiarity and simplicity, and then it builds on it too. This is the exact same as the first part, and now this is new. This is all harder, more tiring twists, and it's harder to read. And just, again, Super Fantasy, you just gotta keep moving. There's not a real break in this part. I'm pretty sure those are not 8th notes, and the way they're spaced out I think are 12th notes, but correct me if I'm wrong. With the whole tension thing, again, it's 12th notes, so it's kind of a break, but when it comes to pump, hitting the top notes, in my opinion, or at least like the red notes, generally takes more stamina, because the blue notes can hit the heel more easily, but if you have like smaller shoe size, for example, or you have to like kind of reach forward more with the red notes, it, the red notes are generally more tiring, so. Introducing the red notes first to like kind of tire out the player, I think is a really good way. I don't, I, I, it's a stylistic choice. And another stylistic choice right here, look at this hold. He could have just uh, ended the tick right here, but it just, oh, there's just so many like juicy elements that just makes this like a fine wine. Look at this like double hold here. It just looks sexy. Anyways. Same thing, but mirrored. We have like the I love that technique here too. I don't see this in I don't really see this in other charts to be honest, or at least at this level. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, finally you have another chorus. Only this time it's a little different. You notice that key sound? And oh my god, what was that? Entering what appears to be your doom basically. A hold style where you have that little break here. Break. But how many measures? One, two. I, I think I'm counting measures with the ape note, but the whole idea is that's that's a pretty substantial run already. That's like similar to the middle or ending of the chorus too. But anyway, again with the the bit the, 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 it follows the song. You have a little break here that just follows the melody, similar to the very first part where it just follows the beat. You have the shutter. Got another one, and here we go. This is Super Fantasy S16. No holds, no holds, yes. <laughs> right here, you have a full stare to right twist. This is so brutal. This is a, uh, you're going from the right to the left, and then immediately coming out of that uh, stare to the twist, you have to readjust and stream again. But only this time, there are no breaks. There are no 16 poles, there, there is no chill. Actually, no, I forgot to mention. Every measure, there's a twist. So not only are you doing full-on measures of just runs now, you also have to twist. This is why this chart in particular has so much identity. It's brutal. Another one. And actually, wait, he an EXC added variation there, look at that. Weight shift. St uh, twist. These are brutal. That's a brutal twist pattern. It's a left, right, left, right, left. And then right, left. Is that mirrored? That's two like, tight twists in a row, like the inner patterns. Super fast. <laughs> this ending has a twist too. Everyone double steps it. Except if you're Tisa. <laughs> but I just think, I do really like that addition. I don't know. 
That is so stylistic and raw. And that's super fancy. I love the shutter effect here. Everyone knows that there's a shutter hold there. It is totally not fair if you're doing a side raid, but <laughs> you kind of just know it going into this chart. But anyways, um, yeah, that was super fancy. S16, what a forward turn. Oh my gosh. Um, I probably ran one on way too long. This is probably a lot longer compared to my other charting analysis videos, but I hope it's a little bit more insightful compared to my other ones because S16, or is this one, has so much more weight and like value to me. This chart is a run chart. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. Because there's three dedicated sections. I would say there's three courses. The first course, it starts with the 16 friends, you have um, 16 holds, and you even have the shutter effect so you can rely on a little bit of like leniency and not full on foot speed. Going into the second course, you know, there's no shutter effects and now it relies in some of the parts on full on uh, run measures where you just gotta keep moving. There's no shutters to rely on. In the bridge, tension keeps on building. You kind of start to lose morale because you're, like, you're tired at this point and you're like, I can't push on. You know, even if this is just a run chart, now with these types of twists, it can be argued now that, yeah, this is definitely a 16. The burst, it's just so good. And then the final uh, chorus is just, it's, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. I think another thing to mention is how with these runs, I can't literally break down every single pattern. So like, for example, like that right there is a little bit, it could be either less or more stamina intensive. It's just a one foot going up and down while the right stays. You know, you could make runs, but at the same time, these runs feel fresh. I don't know how to describe it. Like, if you chart, I feel like they're not the easiest, you know? I don't want to ramble anymore. I have taken too much time. I got homework to do. Leave a comment on whatever chart you guys want me to review next. And yeah, let me know if any of you guys are super fantasy enjoyers. 